Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Sailing with the Jameses. This week we're diving into the topic of parasitic drag. We've made a number of modifications below the waterline and now it's time we do a little bit of explaining. For those of you who are new to our channel, we are currently in the middle of a major refit to our full-time home and aluminium sailboat named Emma James. During this refit, we've extended the boat, we removed the skegs and recessed the anodes. As the saying goes, a smooth boat is a fast boat. So join us as we break down how we're addressing parasitic drag and improving performance. Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminium catamaran and we're fixing her up as we sail around the world. Come along for the journey and click subscribe. Daddy? Mommy? Charlie? Jamie James. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was parasitic drag and um, we've got very nice fine hulls um, but we've got a fair bit of parasitic drag on the hull which is slowing us up a little bit. Normally if you're a racing boat you'll start at the top and work your way down for performance so starting with sails, rigging, weight alofts and the hull's the last thing you do. But we're more of a performance cruiser so with us we don't want to do the sails and then have an inefficient hull that'll stretch the sails and shorten the life. So we're going to do it backwards and do the hull first, fix all the parasitic drag while we're out of the water here, and then we'll go up and work on the sails and things like that. So to talk you through what it is, if we come up the front here, we've got very nice fine bowels, very good lines, but we've got eight anodes in total all sticking proud out of the hull and so whenever you take a layer of protection away you want to look at why it is now these anodes are directly below the stainless stays and there's a fair bit of corrosion on these eyelets here so what we're going to do is change this to dyneema and we're going to cut these off and that'll stop all the disturbance and flow around these ones here you can see with this anode here this anode is nearly two years old and it hasn't really been working at all. Now, a few videos ago, what I did is I rewired the main engines and what we found is that they aren't isolated to earth to the hull. And so that's why they've got three anodes here back around the engines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put isolators on the main engines so that there's no potential. With a main engine, generally speaking, you'll see that the engine and the earth is bonded to itself and to the hull. And so with an aluminium boat, you wanna isolate that. So that's what we'll do, and if we do that, we won't need all three anodes back here. So we're gonna to go to two, that's probably too many, but <laughs> we're gonna err on the safe side and go to two, and um, we're gonna infill them. So we'll cut a square here uh, and put a square anode, reset it, recess it into the hull, and that'll make it nice and smooth. And <laughs> we've already talked about my friend the Kiwi props here. So these Kiwi props, they keep jamming and stuff like that, uh, locking into gear. So we're going to get rid of these and get folding props, which is a cleaner profile. They fold back this way. They don't work as well in reverse, that's true. But yeah, we're, uh, we're happy with that. And they do work in reverse a little bit. Uh, but these Kiwi props will be coming off because they create a fair bit of drag through the water. And also if we re release the skeg and don't have that layer of protection there, they can still catch things that go by where the folding props are smoother. Then we come around to the back of the boat. Now you've probably seen in some of our other videos where we've had a few issues with weight. Now basically we've come to terms that we're always going to be a little bit overweight. There's some stuff that we just want to have and there's some more things that we want to get. So our design waterline is here. Our actual water line <laughs> is up here. And what happens is, because we're so much deeper, when we go, instead of bow steering, we suck in in the stern and the back step goes under and we just create a whole heap of drag. 
Now it's a lot easier to push a boat around the world than to pull a boat around the world. It's sucking in at the stern here. So we're going to extend these, bring them up a bit shallower, create a cleaner profile and cleaner exit off the water. And that will reduce a whole heap of drag on the back of the boat. Make it easier to hop in out of the tender as well. It will also add a little bit of buoyancy for all the stuff we're about to build on the back deck. But that there is a little bit about parasitic drag and as we go we'll show you how it comes off and we'll let you know how it works. In the months following haul out, we made several modifications and upgrades. We replaced the rigging with Dyneema, reducing the drag where the stays insert to the hull at the waterline. We modified our anode system, reducing the number down from 8 to 4 and recessed them to be flush with the surface of the hull. We added two beautiful sugar scoops as the boat was extended from 50 to 52 feet. In a more controversial move, we removed the original after design skegs, further reducing the wetted surface area. With all these changes now complete, we are nearing splash day. It's time to fare the hull and finalize these modifications and modify the last two items, the rudders. So a smooth hull is a fast hull. And we want to try and make it, we're not going to go crazy. We're still going to leave all the weld lines and things that are in here. But what we are going to do is where we did our improvements, and this is where the anodes got cut off. It's nice and smooth now. Where our recessed anodes are, we're going to put a hard edge. We'll fare this edge here and fair the inside and make a hard corner. And what that'll do is it'll break the water away. So then we can have a back eddy in the front here and we'll just smooth off the other side and the edges as well, just with a little bit of fairing to make it nice and smooth and slippery. Down here, we're gonna do a little bit of work to our rudders. Now our rudders are fairly, big clunky and agricultural and i would love to remake them but unfortunately we don't have time on this refit so we're just going to get the best bang for the buck and the way we do that is we look at the trailing edge which is this edge here it's quite fat and thick so we're going to make it nice and thin and just make them join and then the other thing we've got is at the front here we're going to add another piece the edge of the hull is a fair way away from where the rudders are. So there's a thing called an end plate effect. The way the end plate effect works is if we're here and we've got water going down through over the rudders to our nice fine entry point here and coming off nice and at the back, it also wants to go over the top and over the bottom when you turn and put it side on. So what happens then is instead of having a nice close thin edge for the water to go across, it's got a very big thick edge, which is inefficient. So if we reduce that by making this edge closer to the hull, so the water can't go around it, then it'll force it to go off our nice, thin, perfect edge at the back. So, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a piece out the front here, so it goes up a lot closer to the hull, to yeah, reduce our end plate effect. And those two things there, are the best band for the buck that we can do. At the back, what we're gonna do, You can see here, these are the remnants of our skegs. So where you get your best bang for the buck here is, you can see where it's all disturbed in this weld. So we'll just fair that bit off and make it nice and smooth. This one isn't quite as important, close to the hull. We'll also work on this trailing edge and make that a little bit more nice, smooth transition. And then at the front here, you can see we've got a doubler plate where the shaft comes through the hull. So we're just gonna round that off a little bit and just make it a little bit more smoother and hopefully very, very slippery. At the back here, where it joins onto the hull, this is where the rudder comes out. The reason we can't work on the end plate effect on the back of the rudders is because this has all been modified now. I don't actually know how much clearance is in there and we can't put the rudders in until we're raised up and on the trailer because I can't get them up and in here. So we'll just do a little bit on the front and next refit, we'll modify the backs of them to make them nice and close and very little clearance when they're in the middle here. 
Now, what we will do though, is we're gonna smooth off this transition. There's a slight little bit of a kick there. So we'll just bog in the center here and just make it a slightly smoother transition just so it can flow as it comes through to the end. And I mentioned in our extension video, our plan for at the back here, the worst thing that can happen for these stern extensions is they can come out of the water. As soon as they come out of the water, they start slapping and it gets very, very loud. Cool. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fair an edge here to make it nice and flat. Again, if we get a hard point, the water will release from it earlier. But what it also does is it makes our virtual stern when we're going along further out the back because it will separate the weight, make that come out the back a lot further and we'll get a virtual extended waterline length which helps with our speed also. So there'll be a little bit of fairing there. So the next step is to sand all this up. We'll do all that today and scratch it all up. We'll give it an acid wash tomorrow. We'll put some primer on all the bare alloy and then we'll start fairing. so far is we've wet sanded all the hulls just being very careful of all the welds and that so that we didn't take all of the angi foul off them where the old anoids were and where any bare metal was we roughed it all up with 40 grit sandpaper then we acid washed it and then we put some primers on now the first coat was very very thin and then the second coat this has two coats of primer on is a lot thicker we thinned out the first one just for it to bond and then did a chemical bond for the second coat on top um we're gonna have to put a tie coat on there before we do the anti fouling here these are our anode boxes so again we did exactly the same process as there we scuffed it all up we acid washed and then we put the two coats of primer on and now we have some fairing. Now the fairing is unsanded, that's probably why it doesn't look very good, but essentially what we're trying to do is just smooth out the welds on the sides, so we'll do that. We can have rounded edges here and make a sharp edge on the front. Um, we've come down the back here. We've fared up our skirts. And at the back here, what we're gonna to attempt to do is just make it a bit sharper, the trailing edge. We'll see how that goes and whatever it'll be, it'll be. But a smooth boat's a fast boat. So she's all smoothed off. Same treatment as the anodes and the boxes with the primer. And then we've just feared it all. And then we'll epoxy seal it once we've sanded it. We also feared the tra transition here between where our extensions are and where the original hull is just to make a smoother transition between the two of them. So we've fared all that all around and underneath. And then at the back here, again, none of this is sanded, but we're making a nice hard edge to get a clean release. So we've come and it's the camber's not come out quite as much. It's leveled off slightly at the back here. And then we'll sand this and make a nice hard edge for a clean release of the water. The next step is to sand it, then we'll epoxy seal it, and then once that dries, then we will do the tie coat and anti fell the lot.
this is stage one of the rudder for modifications. You can see on the top here, this is our old rudder. And again, it has quite a blunt back edge on it. This is the new rudder here. So all we've got is some 300 GSM by axle. We put a whole heap of strands of our woven rope in, in the center and then just filled it with carbacel and then put another 300 GSM on the other side. We do need to trim it just to make it a straight line down the back. And then I'm gonna give it a bit of a kick on the bottom. So mainly for fun, just like an airplane wing, it'll have a little bit of a, a tail on the bottom here and we'll try and duplicate the same thing on the other side. Now, this isn't the finished product once we clean up the line. We're still gonna fare it all to make it all nice and smooth. And just make sure this is just a bit of a backbone to build on for our nice trailing edge. You can see the differences there. And for bang for buck, out of the whole lot, even though the shape is pretty agricultural, this is what's gonna make the biggest difference. This nice, big, smooth trailing edge here. So yeah, we'll do it and see how we go. With all these modifications complete and relaunch day fast approaching, we're excited to get her back in the water and see what she can do. She's faster, much faster. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to our Patreons. Your support helps make these videos possible. Leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on our modifications to reduce parasitic drag. And don't forget to hit the like button and we will see you all next Saturday. Bye everyone.